So here's the thing. Everything in life really depends on communication, effective communication. But you can't communicate if people aren't listening to you. You can't get the message through to your kids if they don't want to hear what you have to say. You can't do a proper negotiation if the other person doesn't have respect for the things that you say or believe you. Why would that be and how do we fix it? Well, I'm Rabbi Abe. Welcome to my channel at RabbiAbe.com and I am here to give you some insight. It's a deep secret that actually the Bible expresses, but we need Kabbalah to understand it. So let's understand. Why don't people listen to us? Why do they or why won't they? This is the question. So if we go to the, <clears throat> the Torah, the Bible, that is Old Testament, uh, chapter 30 of um, Numbers, chapter 30 of Numbers, and I'll read to you. Uh, verse 3. If someone makes a vow, if someone makes a vow, to God, or makes an oath to oblige himself or herself, he must not break his word. He must not break his word. He must do all that he expressed. He must do. Now this is, this is really a full idea. I'd like to just focus on one or two points over here, but it's really full. So first off, what does it mean to make a vow? I mean, who goes around making vows? I vow to, you know, unless maybe you're in court, you're going to swear. No. We uh, have learned in past classes that our words have power. They are extensions of our consciousness. And consciousness is the 99% of the energy that's behind every action. It begins with a thought, an idea, desire. Then it's expressed in words or in action. So think about it. Every decision we make, decisions are very powerful things. Because when you make a decision, you can change, you do. It causes you to go into action, inaction, which is also an action. Whatever it is, desires are, uh, when you make a decision in your head, in your mind, to do something not to do something, it's a very powerful potential force. Now I say potential force, why? Because if you dis make a decision, if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, so that energy that you received to be able to do it, because that's what's happening, right? What, why do you feel power when you make a decision? You're getting energy. Every time we make decisions based on our desires, we get the energy in order to fulfill and complete it. And what happens if we don't? So very simply, that energy kind of it goes out the window. I won't go now into the details, but it does feed some sort of negativity, which comes back eventually to bite us in the behind. But we're not going to go into that right now. You can ask questions in the comment section if you have questions about that, and then maybe we can do another class about that. But we get this energy, we don't do it. Now, you're talking to a person. Now, it, you know, it, it has to be clear to us that our soul is a, is a force. It's a universal force, and it, our, our souls, all of our souls, um, create an interconnectedness between all of us. Now, while our bodies are separate, because our bodies are physical, our soul is not separate. Our soul is energetic and has connection to every other soul. Some people we feel more than others. We have, you know, closer proximity, and I don't mean in physical space, but, you know, uh, closer in consciousness. Okay, we feel each other. There's no question about that. 
we feel each other. If you're more sensitive, you feel more. If you're less sensitive, you may feel externally less, but never mind. You are still going to react. Each one of us react with each other's energy. So here you go, you're, you're, you're in a negotiation. Well, we're not going to talk about negotiations now. That's for the next class. But you're talking to, let's say you're talking to your kids. You're talking to someone. You're talking to your spouse. You're talking to a friend. And you tell them something. You want them to hear you. Uh, you may want them to listen to what you have to say. I don't mean listen. I mean listen because you're giving them maybe some advice. You're recommending something. You don't feel that they're listening to you. Why not? Well, it's one of two reasons, but it, those two reasons are really one. What's the reason? At a soul level, if they are not listening to you, it is an indication that they feel that you are not accomplishing the things you said you will do. In other words, unconsciously they feel you're not an example of doing whatever. Imagine you try to give someone business advice on the stock market, but you know zero about the stock market, or you're really bad at it. You know, if someone asks me for advice about the stock market, I'll, I'll basically tell them. I may give them advice on just general investing, but I don't have much to say about the stock market because I'm not good at that. So I'm not going to give you my advice. The same way, if you try to give your friend advice about the stock market and he knows you really kind of, you know, you're not good at that. I don't want to say you suck, but okay, you understand what I'm saying. So, he's not going to listen to you, plain and simple. That's on a conscious level, but on an unconscious level, it's the same thing. I can't tell you to do things, I can't recommend things to you that you don't feel the vibe within me that you're doing. I can't tell you the, to tell the truth if I'm a liar. I can't tell you how to fix your anger if I go around as a very angry person. I can't, I can't, but why? I mean, I can, I can certainly tell you, but you're not going to listen. It's, it's not going to mean anything to you. Why? Because at that unconscious level, I feel you're not true to your word. You see, it's very simple. Part of the creator force is truth. Truth is one of the attributes of the force of creation. Again, can't go into it now, but truth, emet in Hebrew, truth is actually one of the spiritual vessels of the force of creation. It's truth. The universe doesn't operate on a lie because a lie has no continuity. The definition of the light of creation is continuity. It continues, it goes on. Past, present, future, forever, that's the force. That's truth. If I don't feel you're true, if you don't feel I'm true, I won't want to listen to you. In fact, energetically, I just won't feel to listen to you. If we want people to listen to us, that means we need to truly give up sugar if we said, you know what, I'm off sugar. Well, be careful what you're saying. You're off sugar? Did you say for how long? Did you say forever? That's a vow. Uh, again, a vow is as simple as making a statement on something you're going to do or not do. It's a vow. It's a decision that you're expressing. Whatever it is, I'll be at your house at 4 o'clock. You're there at 4.30. You broke the vow. Now, how do you remedy this? Well, there's remedies, but again, when you say you're going to do something, say to yourself, I'm not making a vow. Be aware. I'm not making a vow. I'm not expressing. In other words, I'm not committing to this. It shouldn't be used as an excuse, but it's to protect yourself from utilizing energy, which you may or may not accomplish. The thing is, we have to be careful what we say. And I'm off gluten. I'm off, you know, we, we, we're 
totally into this stuff here, which is fine. But then you need to do it. Okay. If you did, if your intention is this is you're going to do that, you're making a commitment. It's not only to whoever you're talking to or for whatever reason you're saying it. You're making a cosmic commitment to yourself, to your spirit. You're expressing part of your soul as a commitment. Now, when you don't accomplish it, you don't reap the benefit of that commitment that you made. It's called a light without a vessel, and that's not a good thing. It creates negativity for us. What's more, it causes people not to buy in to what we want to tell them. This could be in specific areas, or this can be a very general thing. Maybe you're the type of person people just don't listen to you. Well, you need to check yourself. There's also the as aspect of not listening to you physically when you talk. Why? Again, another aspect of this is that you are not true to the Creator. What does that mean? Let's say you're not confident enough to put forth your idea. It doesn't mean it's right. Your idea can be totally wrong. But if you don't feel confidence to express, it's, it, I, you know, I don't want to be too harsh, but it's almost like a lie to the Creator. Because the Creator gave you this idea to be expressed. Accepted, not accepted, different story, different story. Depends on other things. But nevertheless, if you have an idea that you would like to express and you, you're, you're too timid, you're too shy, you don't put it forth properly, in a way, again, you're shortchanging the force that gave you this idea in the first place. And if you shortchange yourself, why should the Creator give you any more ideas? It's another kind of level of vows that we make or don't make, or being true, being true to ourselves and being true to the light of our soul that exists within us. You want people to listen? Start doing little things. If you say you're going to do them, do them. Accomplish it. Or don't do them if you say you're not going to do them. Start small. Again, nobody says you have to make these commitments. And always protect yourself by saying to yourself, I'm not, this is not a vow. You say it to yourself. This is not a vow, but I really hope to do it. Fine. That's okay. Be blessed. Very important idea. Be blessed. And uh, I will see you very soon on the next video, likely tomorrow. We'll talk about successful negotiations. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And I'll see you on the next video. All the best.